Morning car lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman. And today, my friends, we're going to be looking at the VW Polo, which is a very special car for me because it's been, in one sort of way or another, part of my life for as far as I can remember. Because right back to when I was a child, my mum has always driven Polos, right from, I think from the first variant when it, when it first came out, the one that was kind of just like a box, like a matchbox, like a car would, uh, like a child would draw a car. And I think she's had every variant ever since. And obviously this one today is going to be the latest one which we're going to be looking at. And um, I'm very much looking forward to reviewing it for you today, guys, because as I say, it's got a very, a very special place in my heart. So then, let's have a look around it, shall we? And as you can see, this latest variant, it's kind of more of what they call a facelift in the industry. It's not massively different to the last pair. They've just tweaked a few things. So we're gonna go have tweaks here in the kind of the shape of the headlights here. And also we've got uh, LED headlights as well, which is very nice. When you drive it at night, this at night, it lights up the road absolutely beautifully. Really, really cool. And obviously they've tweaked them out with the front bumper down here, made it a bit more cool looking. And Generally speaking, just tiny little tweaks on the outside. We look to side, look to the side here. We've got 15-inch alloys on this one, but it can get bigger ones. But to be honest, I think when you've got a small car like this, they kind of look a little bit ridiculous if you go for the massive bad boy drug dealer alloys. So I'm not too, I'm not too worried about that. Tiny tweaks in the body, but I just think it generally looks a lot more stylish than it has done before. I don't know, a few little sort of lines and details here. Kind of, it's sort of use the Porsche 911 sort of ethos here, where it's sort of evolved rather than uh, revolved, if, if I could quote Alan Partridge. And the same thing as we go around the back. Now, you've noticed these lights here, they've kind of taken these straight from the Golf as well. And to be honest, it, you could always tell the difference between a Polo and a Golf for years and years. But as the sort of Polos have developed, you kind of, at first glance, you have to take a second look sometimes, have a double glance, because it kind of doesn't look that much different to a Golf anymore. If we look around here, they've got, uh, again, minor changes on the bumper here but not very much they've moved the uh, polo to the middle there which is quite cool actually and that's something that vw seem to be doing across their range now and we go around the side to be honest it's kind of the same as the other side slightly cleaner maybe oh look at the gloss on that wheel lovely oh dear bad gloss on that wheel not so good but generally speaking a really kind of nice and stylish looking understated but stylish looking car this one is uh, it's called ascot gray and this I really love it. Some other uh, car channels have kind of criticised it, so just calling it a flat grey and saying it's a bit boring, but I think it's really nice. It's, as I say, it's called Ascot Grey and it's the only one you get for free. And to be honest, if that's for free, I don't know why you bother paying for any of the other colours. I love it. I think it's really nice. So first of all, let's have a look at the boot, shall we, while we're outside in the freezing cold. Obviously, you do that kind of really cool sort of press the VW button there to open the boot, as with most VWs. And as you can see, for a small car, it's not too bad. It's 351 litres of space you got in there. For some strange reason, we've got a, a Conker in the corner. I don't know why. I've been using this car... Um, with my family over the last few days and uh, my son's decided to, uh, he's wanted to store a Conker in there. Anyway, you don't get that sort of thing in other car channels, do you? Decent sized boot. Again, a few lovely crumbs spread about the place, which, uh, as is my uh, my son's one. Have a look in here. You've got a gigantic, oh, the Conker's gone down. He'll be, he won't be pleased about that. Gigantic space for storage there. Obviously, that would be, usually be a um, uh, spare wheel, but in this case, we've got the puncture repair kit, which, um, I, to be honest, I don't think anyone would actually bother using it. It's more trouble than it's worth. But what's really nice in a great feature is something that VW do. If you pull all this up like this it's not that smooth but that drops down like that and it gives you it's a good drops down about sort of about that much there what is that just a few inches it gives you a bit of extra boot space if you don't want to be lifting up and using utilizing that space underneath which is really handy little feature i think especially in a small car like this when space is at a premium so then let's have a look at the inside shall we and the first thing you notice when you get in here is this amazing beautiful screen this cockpit digital cockpit here which i think it's incredible because if you think about that sort of technology that used to be when it first came out just you know sort of um primarily s glasses and top of the range range rovers and this is actually standard in the polo now so i think that's absolutely awesome i love it. it looks really cool and you've got the screen over here as well uh, this is a, uh, a mid-range one so you've got one with a smaller screen you've got one that's all touch screen this is kind of the middle of the road one which has uh touch screen and also the dials here as well for basic things like volume and things like that and some people kind of criticize that but i really like it i do as I, you know i'm not gonna make any more knob jokes but i do think it is good to keep at least one knob in the car and it's also really high resolution i mean you can't really see it so much now because it's just sort of black and white screen but when you plug the uh, apple carplay in which has also got it's really really bright and crisp graphics better than my jaguar xf to be honest it's really really impressive but generally speaking it feels good it feels solid feels really nice kind of standard sort of lovely vw feel going across down here again 
in the top of the range models you can get like a climate control which is all touch screen down here and haptic sort of uh, um sort of switches but again i think when when you're talking about the air conditioning and the climate control um for the car i prefer to have these proper turning things because i can look at the screen look where i'm going out there without even having to look down there i can go duck, duck, duck. i know exactly what i'm doing and uh, i don't uh, uh, drive into the hedge like that one over there as you can see this is a manual gearbox five speed it's kind of nice and chunky the gear is going really nice again got that kind of lovely volts wagon quality to it uh, down here you got a uh, 12 volt charger we used to call it the cigarette lighter jesus christ oh, oh brilliant i've dropped the dropped the knob ah now this is going to be interesting is it going to drop down into the area where you can never get it or am i going to be able to oh sh Never mind, I'll sort that out later. So you've got a 12 volt charger there, now without the cover on it, which I shall have to retrieve later. Rather strange shaped, I don't know why they put these hexagonal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight octagonal uh, shaped um, uh, cup holders there. But, um, you know, well, I, th I think there's, there's bigger problems in the world. I'm just going to ignore it. Got a lovely, which is quite a nice thing for uh, a small car. It's nice at arm rest. It's quite rare in small cars. I like that. I like to, although, to be fair, it is quite low down i think i will be quite kind of lot so I, I think if i use that armrest i'd be kind of driving like this but again this is kind of first world problems lifted up and we do have a, a tiny tiny little bit of a little bit of storage space down there what's that in there let's have a look what have i what have i put in there it is a uh i i, I have no idea what that is i thought it was a salt sachet but it's it's something to do with a uh, a brother appliance other electrical appliances are available but anyway yeah that is a rather meager storage space it gets one fist in there should you look to uh, should you uh, you know want to store a uh, fist for whatever reason and up the top here we got uh, a lovely little uh, thing for the sunglasses which again primarily was the remit of uh, higher end cars but they're sticking that in the polo now so that now so that's really nice if it should it actually go back up there we go looking over to the passenger side you've got this what looks like on first glance kind of carbon fibery but it's not i don't believe it is actually carbon fiber i think it's just a pattern uh, that went to look like carbon fiber but to be honest i don't really care because what <laughs> i've always wondered what the good was of having a carbon fiber dash in the first place uh, great big glove box in there we've got a lovely space for your handbook and of course a hangover from the times of covid always keep a mask in there just in case massive great big storage space there huge great big side bins as you can see over here but i didn't show you because it's kind of stuffed with all manner of uh, things in there but you can see a nice little scraper for a cold day today um seats are sport seats and again they're you know they're not kind of it's not going to be a porsche 911 but they're pretty sturdy they feel really good again volkswagen quality and they're going to hold you nicely in place for a car like this because let's face it you're not going to be throwing this thing too hard in the bends anyway so then into the back and as you know i am a strapping six footer and i've got about what is that there about two, one and a half two inches of headroom there so uh, i don't think there's any danger of me smacking my head there unless we go over a particularly vicious uh, speed bump at a particularly um uh, irresponsible speed <laughs> however in terms of leg room again this is a small hatchback okay so i'm not going to have acres but i have got just enough the feet fit nicely under the seat there no problem i've got again a good decent bit of legroom there and this seat is not particularly you know it could come back a little bit more as well so i think that's pretty good for the size of car it is the seats themselves look really nice again beautiful kind of got that kind of solid sort of but comfortable feel that uh, vw are known for nice kind of sports seats in the back as well really beautiful actually really nice materials they're not leathers obviously but i think if you're not going to have leather this is the next best kind of material to go to it looks just feels really smart and really kind of cool and uh, good very good quality again door bins a little bit smaller in the back but again you kind of expect that for this sort of car um nice as i say kind of roomy how much have i got sort of left to right decent amount of room for the feet as well there i'm pretty happy with that and this one even has chargers in the back again this is uh, apologies for the mud that my uh, children have made here so it's an absolute disgrace but um this is a kind of remit of luxury cars you know until not very long ago unfortunately i believe they are my the dreaded USB-C, which i don't like at all but you can get an adapter but the fact is they've got charges in the back they've got charges in the front and it uh, sounds like a song doesn't it I'll, uh, i'm not sure which one i'll uh, maybe i'll work on one but either way that's a really nice feature for what is you know a small car you know a small hatchback the cheap not the cheapest but getting down towards the cheapest that vw do and if you think about you know what <laughs> what polos used to be like it's quite amazing so then you think it to yourselves that vw sounds really nice but does it have that vw quality feel when you're driving it and it 100 percent does it's it's kind of built on you know years of quality all, all polos are pretty good to drive but this one it just feels it doesn't feel like a small car it's got that solid substantial feel that you'd get almost like driving i don't know like a bmw 3 series or something and you know it's certainly 
certainly doesn't feel any different to uh, say a Golf. I think if you were to, I was going to say if you were to close your eyes and drive both the car, drive both the cars, you'd probably first of all crash into the hedge. But if in some way you were someone's kind of someone was kind of keeping you on the road, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. To be honest, size-wise, I guess a Golf is a little bit more spacious in size. But really, to drive this thing. You can barely notice the difference. As I said before, the gear changes are nice and chunky and smooth and nice. I'm not, you know, a, a, a manual gearbox is not for everyone these days, but if you're going to have one, VW do it very, very well. Pedal is beautifully weighted. They used to be a little bit stiff in days of old, the pedals on the VW, particularly the clutch, but this is just very, very, just sort of, it oozes that sort of German technology. And at the end of the day, it cannot beat the German engineer. I don't care what anyone says. This kind of, the, the, the sort of the feedback I'm getting through the steering wheel and the sort of sense of, you know, uh, just quality and how everything's very tight and with the sort of combination of smoothness, it feels kind of, I'd say it feels nicer to drive than, than you know, than something like my Jaguar XF, for example. And people are going to be probably screaming at the screen now, but I genuinely mean that. I think Jaguars are great. You know, I love my Jaguar, but there's a certain something when you get in a German engineer car. The, I don't know, I don't know, but perhaps certain other cars, but certainly the Jaguar, in my opinion, just doesn't hit. For example, the brakes are super sharp, and this, this kind of goes back, I remember I used to, used to drive uh, a friend's Golf of mine, I think it was a Mark II Golf, and I remember, and I had uh, won my first Golf, which was a Vauxhall Nova, going into the VW and pressing the brake, I was like, bang, whoa, it kind of shot me forward, I was really sort of shocked at how sharp those brakes are, and they have retained that throughout the years, and they really kind of, if you want to stop on this thing, it will stop on a sixpence, I'm not sure if that is the correct term, I it's turning on a sixpence but you know what i reckon it'll probably stop on a sixpence as well if you could find a sixpence lying around and indeed you wanted to stop on it so we're out on the open road now this is a bypass on the edge of town and it just sits absolutely beautiful i'm going at 50 mile an hour here and it's cruising and just sits on the tarmac like you know it just feels so at home i feel like i could drive this for miles and miles and miles. And again, you get that sense of being uh, in a much, much bigger, um, longer and smoother car than you actually are. Um, if I was gonna give it any criticism, I think perhaps it could do with maybe another gear. Five-speed gearbox these days, it used to be okay, but I think when you got cars like this, it could have benefited from a, a, an additional gear. But that's me being, you know, hypercritical now. In terms of suspension, you can actually get sports suspension in this, but to be honest, I don't really know why you would do that. You know, it's not a sports car. And yeah, you can get a two litre GTI. Perhaps you might want to go for it for, the, for that version. But to be honest, for general everyday driving, which let's face it, what most people are going to be driving this car for, this is beautifully smooth. It's beautifully kind of reassuringly firm, yet, you know, absorbs those bumps at the same time. I, I, I don't think, even if I had the GTI version, I think I, after a while I'd probably get annoyed with the slightly bumpier ride. This is just, this is the one I go for every day of the week. It's also really quiet as well, you know. Some of these smaller cars, you can get them, particularly when you get up to higher speed, they go like, eee, start whining like they're really straining. Again, this is super quiet and you can get a, you know, just a tiny amount of hum from the engine. There's not much road noise at all. It's quite a quiet place to be. Again, feels like a bigger car than it actually is. And I know I say that quite a lot, but it's kind of, I suppose the biggest accolade for a small car, if it doesn't feel like a small car, if it drives like a big car, you know, it's great, it's win-win. So guys, there we have it, VW Polar. As you can probably tell, it's kind of, it's always been a fond car for me. And it's amazing when you look back where it came from to where it is now. It's kind of just like an S-Class condensed and squashed down into a tiny sort of reasonably priced small hatchback with all that quality, all that kind of beautiful sort of driving feedback and all that technology as well it's, it's it's a truly amazing thing what volkswagen have done and not only has it retained all that vw beautiful sort of uh, german quality that german engineer quality it's it's kind of improved the style as well without changing what it is it still essentially looks like a it doesn't look like the original polo obviously but gradually they've changed bit by bit by bit and just improved steadily tiny bit by bit and i kind of don't know where they can go next with this. I think they've peaked. I don't think it can get any better. So if you are looking for a small, reasonably priced car, you know, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than perhaps your, um, uh, uh, the, the, you know, sort of the Fords and the various French cars out there. But to be honest, in my mind, it is worth every single penny. If you want a small, reasonably priced hatchback that essentially looks like a Golf, but is smaller and cheaper, you have got to get this car. 
it's awesome in its class i think it is an absolute leader so guys i hope you've enjoyed my video today i've come back in the warmth of the car today because it is bloody freezing here in worcestershire but if you enjoyed that video and you appreciated me going out and freezing my off uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already press the little like button on the video and if you want to support the show head over to the patreon page or indeed click the join button below this video but until next time guys i'm bobby freeman drive safe